I'm very happy. You know, I manifested that reality. I've been telling everybody all week, there's a new Nick Lentz in town. Something has happened special after my last fight. It has nothing to do with the loss, because that was a crooked fight as it was, the last fight I had. But it had to do with there's something clicked in me. Something changed. Supernatural, whatever you want to call it. Something changed, and I'm a brand new person. I have my second kid. I, I, I feel like my life is complete. When I first came into the UFC, I was not a complete person. I just got here through sheer toughness, and I stayed around for 10 years. For 10 years, I've been in this sport. 10 years, I've been, actually 15 years, I've been in this sport. 10 years, I've been in the UFC. But today, from now on, I am one of the most complete fighters there is. And I proved it today, hands down. I'm curious, Nick, you said after the fight, um, in the quotes, that you feel confident in saying that you're the best in the world with a win like that. What was it about that win that sort of gave you the confidence to say that? And did you not believe you were the best in the world before getting this win tonight? Well, no, I clearly was not the best in the world before because I lost to other people. And I didn't, I didn't put it together, but, but when I first came into fighting, I had an idea of how to get to the top. Yeah. And that idea was, if I worked hard and I beat people up and I kept winning, I would get to the top. Well, I learned very fast after beating six people in a row and I wasn't anywhere near the top, that that's not what gets you to the top. You have to be the complete package. You have to be good on the mic. You have to be good in the fights. You have to produce entertaining fights. You have to have a mindset and approach to fighting that is an entertainment idea. Fighting is an entertainment sport. Anyone who says that it's like a regular old sport, like football or something where they just care about how you win, is a fool. And that used to be me. I used to be that fool. I used to think just if I was a good person and I trained hard and I wanted it and I could win, I could get there. And I got there and I got passed up by a ton of people who weren't as good as me, didn't put together as many wins, didn't beat as good of people, and I got passed all the time by these guys. Why? Because that's not what fighting's about. Now I understand that. And now I showed you today, I'm a different person and I don't care about the title, I don't care about any of that stuff. I, like I said, I put an open hit out on the carny. If you want this work, you can get it. Just know it'll be the end of your career. Were you surprised the referee didn't step in in the first uh, when you were landing those bombs? Like, and were you worried at all that you might overexert yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't going to overexert myself, but I mean, I was beating them up pretty good. I thought yeah. they were going to stop it a few times, and uh, but I'm glad they didn't. You know, I mean, Ray Maynard is a man, and and he deserves a chance to fight. He puts his life into this, and every man that goes into that cage deserves a chance to fight because they're paying for their family's food. And, and stopping fights early is one of the worst things you can do because that man dedicated his life to this sport. And it's his decision when he should fight, when it, it should be stopped. Now he stopped it at a good time there because the next shots coming after that head kick were brutal and he would have been really hurt. So that's why the ref's there. But I'm glad they gave him another shot. And Gray is one of the, one of the pioneers of this sport. And it was an honor to fight him. You know, I, I hope to see him again. Obviously, he was upset after the fight, but I would love to shake his hand. And, uh, you know, any guy I ever beat, I owe him a debt of gratitude because through his misery and through his pain, I have accelerated my life, and that's how I pay for my kids and stuff to eat. And that's, that's the nature of this sport. When you win, someone else loses. And Gray doesn't deserve to lose. He's a, he's a great man, and I hope they give him a lot of money, and I hope they give him whatever he needs. But if they put him in, if they put him in the cage with someone like me, I'm gonna kill him. You touched on it there again. How much has fatherhood for you been that switch for you to, to help motivate you to, to become the whole package? It yeah. seems like it's that's maybe part of what the reason is behind your metamorphosis. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, me and you talked about this the other day, and I almost cried on camera. But when I was at my best, moving up the ranks at 45. I lost my first kid. And with that, I almost lost my marriage and I almost lost my career. And it took me years and years to get that back together. And that was a miserable time. And now I have two kids. And like we said before, now, now, now I don't need any more kids. I have like seven alarms on my phone for the birth control. And every time it goes off, I run and ask my wife, say, you take that birth control because I can't have no more kids now. I got two kids under two, two little girls. It's too much, it's too much. What's next for you after this fight? In terms of an opponent, anyone come to mind that you don't care? Whoever wants to work, they can get it. I'll fight them next weekend. Do you want to fight one more time this year? Or are you looking more towards 2019? No, I'll fight whenever. Okay.
I, I said, there's an open hit out on the carny. Right here. Right here. If you want this work, you can get it. Just know, like I said before, it will be the end of your career. You mentioned you're one of the best in the world. A lot of lightweight matchups on this card. How do you see yourself going up against some of the top guys in the division, guys like Tony Ferguson, Anthony Pettis, Conor McGregor, Khabib, for example? How do you see yourself sort of coming out? At any point in time, I could beat anyone in the world. Now, any fool knows that MMA is not boxing. MMA is not these other sports. You can lose. You can get caught, you can get beat up, lots of stuff can happen. But at any point in, in a fight, if you fight me, there is a chance you will lose. But like I said before, fighting is not just about winning. There's a lot more to it. And you can learn from that from Conor McGregor, right? He went out, got choked out by Nate Diaz. What did it do to him? Nothing, it just skyrocketed his career even more. If you do the right things and you approach the, the sport right, and you realize that this, has not, this isn't really a sport, it's entertainment. And when you understand that, the world opens up. And that's how you get to the top of this sport. So I know that. That's why I say I put an open head out, because I don't care who it is. Because whoever they put in that cage with me is getting kicked in the head and going to sleep. Yeah. I'll tell you exactly when it clicked for me. I worked my way up the 145 pound ladder. And it was my time, and this is actually kind of a funny story because Connor's on this card. It was my time to fight Connor McGregor. I was ranked number seventh. Then Asiba was ranked number ninth. And everyone said, you can't, you can't give Connor, you can't give Connor Dennis Seaver. Because he's ranked ninth and Lentz is ranked seventh. And the next day I was ranked ninth and he was ranked seventh. <laughs> Because that's how it works. They just switched them. One night I was seven, the next night I was ninth. Because they know, they know that this sport is not about rankings. They know that this sport is about money. And whoever is producing the best money, whoever is producing the best interviews, and whoever does it. I mean, can you argue with them? Look at this circus that Conor McGregor has seen. If I ran this damn thing, I wouldn't let anyone touch Conor. I would just let them knock out people and tell them they were the best in the world. I would, I would break their legs before they went out there. How do you think that fight would have gone if you would have gotten in that fight with Conor instead of Well, as you get, Con when Conor was coming his way up, he had more holes than he has now. Conor's definitely one of the best fighters there is, period. Man's a superstar. I would love a chance at him, there's no doubt. And I think I could beat him. But the man is a superstar and he deserves to be here and he's grown our sport tremendously. I've, I've gone from a Conor hater, and, but being on this card, I can see what he does. I can see that, that he's opened up my world and he's getting us all paid more. And as much as I would love an opportunity to take my shot at him, I see why the UFC didn't give it to me. Because there's five million fucking pay-per-views are gonna sell for this shit, <laughs> right? So that's the, that's, that's the truth, you know? And I learned that, and like you said, it's, it's, it's my, my kids, it's not, that, that's a big part of it. You know, they complete me, they gave me a new sense of life, a new purpose. But also, I just grew up. When I came in here, I was just a dumb ghetto kid. And now I'm not.